Good news, fellow gamers. Education experts all agree on a consensus that playing games is an educational experience. When playing a game, players have to quickly understand, memorize, and test abstract rules that carry logical consequences, not unlike the world itself. And with this educational truism in mind, Nintendo set out to make the Labo. A series of construction toy kits in which kids build elaborately complex electronic toys riddled with high-tech gizmos, all housed in cheap, pliable, and customizable cardboard. Using the Nintendo Switch's electronics, an open-ended editor mode, a pair of scissors, and some leftover cardboard, kids can make just about anything. So with all the creative, living, and life-producing energy that Nintendo's construction set had granted me, I conjured up my inner child to recreate my childhood favorite Simpsons gag. Hans Mole Man Productions presents Man Getting Hit by Football. Amazing. But... but why? Well, in the beginning, for hundreds of thousands of years, we were all hunter-gatherers. And hunter-gatherers have no distinction between work and play, to quote a Boston College psychology professor. A lot of specialized knowledge is still required to grow up as a successful hunter-gatherer, but it was imparted in a much more hands-off way. With kids running off to build play huts and hunt small insects with minimal supervision until the big rite of passage day crossed the line where play had gradually become the real thing. That is, until the agricultural revolution, when education's focus shifted in the interest of literally beating those instincts out of children to teach obedience and work ethic instead. So for thousands of years, most people in Europe were being raised for work by either the church or the school until the Enlightenment, when scholars like John Locke began proposing the idea of a more secular and more mandatory system of primary schooling. He also pushed for the idea of using playtime as teaching time, beginning by advising parents to put alphabet letters on their children's toy blocks. A century later, it was Germany that was leading the world's models for schooling, and it was the German educator Friedrich Froebel who theorized, long before science could prove it, that children's play was the instinct by which they also learn. Froebel created the first kindergartens and what may well have been the first deliberately educational toy, which puts us on a path that transcends time and place to arrive at the Nintendo Labo a Japanese educational toy training kids for a 21st century world using the same philosophies a 19th century German educator used, as inspired by pre-agricultural hunter-gatherers that preceded hundreds of cultures across the globe. And those instincts Froebel was nurturing are uniquely human instincts. The desire to alter our environment, build stuff out of our environment, and most importantly to vision a different future with what we build from our environment are what makes humans a different kind of animal. In 1924, German philosopher Walter ben Benjamin observed that, quote, children are particularly fond of haunting any site where things are being visibly worked on. They are irresistibly drawn by the detritus generated by building, gardening, housework, tailoring, or carpentry. So imagine why so many more kids, rather than adults, want to grow up to be construction workers. Because like I said earlier, playing as a kid is learning. Games are learning. Kids naturally test out the choices and consequences of their actions by playing themselves. And after centuries of trying to beat that instinct out, the idea of teaching kids through their own play is something that is now lauded by educators and toy makers alike. Which has resulted in the often maligned genre of edutainment that can span both the physical and media worlds, as it certainly does with the Nintendo Labo. And to go ahead and share my impressions up front, I think the Nintendo Labo beats the pants off of something like Math Blasters. I grew up during an edutainment boom that had my school equipped with Math Blasters, Carmen San Diego, and Oregon Trail. And while I can't confidently testify that those games managed to educate me about their subject material, I can at least say that they sure did get me used to using computers. Thing is, no matter how fun the game play was, the process of moving characters around and allocating resources in ways that felt meaningful and carried accomplishment that were fun would quickly grind to a halt in a matter of seconds because of stuff like this. The same memorize and repeat quiz of book learning that represents a fundamentally different process than the hands-on learning shop classes and art classes and music classes or indeed with the Nintendo Labo. That's what represents the fundamental difference between learning by proxy through books and tested memorization than learning by doing through play and simulation. Kids aren't engineered to sit still and fill out paperwork all day. So the Froebel Gobbin, or Froebel Gifts, was a program that would start kids off by having them play with simple wooden cues gradually working them up to building blocks with moving parts that were supposed to illustrate the basic properties and possibilities that make up the world. 
no instructions were supposed to be included, just simple enough pieces to get kids discovering how the toys work on their own. Likewise, Nintendo Labo has kids punching out basic sheets of basic shapes that gradually turn into complicated, moving, interactable, three-dimensional, in-real-life objects with weight and texture and moving parts that all make a brilliant kind of sense that you learn as you snap it all together. Even as an adult, the steps where all these strange-looking pieces finally come together to look like something that's on the cover of the box triggers a... Oh! Oh, so that's how it works. Although Froible might balk at all the instructions Nintendo included to help kids get there, explaining the inexplicable magic behind the world has been the goal of education since Lop, and Labo has kids participating in just that in a very hands-on way. This is an idea I'm a real fan of, though it's not without its limitations. For further insight into how this idea cropped up, consider that it was not originally designed as an educational toy. The Labo was originally designed to create yet another novel Nintendo-exclusive gimmick controller, but its educational push was gradually implemented as development continued. However, if kids are going to be learning by doing, then there's few better methods of getting them to learn to make sense of a world full of seemingly magic electronics than by getting them to make electronics themselves in a playful simulation. So just as the Froible Gabin were intended to teach kids about objects in the world around them, the Nintendo Labo Variety Kit has kids constructing objects that resemble the world around them. Kids can build a house, a fishing rod, or an RC car. Looks like he's doing a mating dance. The most complicated build is easily the piano, and the one where you use the most imagination is easily the, uh, quote-unquote, motorcycle. And I have a hard time gauging just what exact specific age range Nintendo is aiming for here, unless it's more of a scattershot approach. The process behind the piano especially seems far too lengthy, tedious, and complicated for any kids I'm gonna guess are under the age of eight. And with the occasional exceptions to ask a parent for help, the instructions seem fairly mature and straight-laced enough. They have a real dry sense of dad humor and background music that I swear is uptown funk. But when you finish building and flop on over to Discover Mode to relearn your own building tricks, you'll find a set of instructions seemingly geared for kids quite a few years younger. I guess this mode is for situations where parents and younger kids were building together, rather than a situation where older kids were building by themselves, but I really appreciate how candid and technical the Discover Guides get despite their young age demographic. Kids are going to see sensors such as the IR camera in their ugly, exposed, raw and honest PCB board form because it elegantly demonstrates how all their cool new toys work. And having a kit to build yourself a cool toy is integral to drumming up some enthusiasm and interest in learning about how those toys work, especially considering that Nintendo's construction methods are so clean and clever. The fishing rod, despite having a fully working spool and thread and reel, all works purely by motion controls. Keeping one Joy-Con still and at a fixed position next to the winding reel Joy-Con means that your motion control inputs are never gonna float away into the air. And the string on the screen perfectly matches the string in real life by sheer simple virtue of the handle Joy-Con's movement. It even has a clicking sound effect, which is just a tab of cardboard knocking against the cardboard reel you're spinning against it. The motorcycle has a working ignition switch and brake lever, whose underside is seen by the controller's IR camera when you pull those levers. Most impressive is the piano which uses IR reflective stickers on every key to be spotted by the IR camera in the darkness of the box to clearly see which note is played. Because the Joy-Con can light a flashlight of IR light humans can't see to see glowing reflecting circles humans can't see. The thing that makes this all work is, once again, the fixed positioning of your controllers and also the dark lighting of that box kind of closing down the brightness and wide space that gives motion controls and IR sensors a much wider range for error outside of these cardboard toys. And just like that, children are gonna realize that their entire perspective of their entire world that they've known their entire lives has been limited by their inescapable human senses. These toys are used as rudimentary controllers for rudimentary video games, starting from the bottom with the interactive pet in the Toy-Con house that's even less deep and complex than the usual Tamagotchi clones. The RC cars can be good fun, if only because their zigzagging, vibrating movement makes for a comically cumbersome way to move around. Go, Nintendo Labo! Escape your bonds of captivity and, and join! Join your other puppers at the farm upstate! 
The kit comes with two cars, so a friend with a pair of Joy-Cons can slide them into an RC car of their own and have robot battles using just one switch. Three, two, one. Go! Get him! Get him! You, you. It's Come not here, boy! Mm. It's not going! Come here! Ooh! Ooh They're win. rumbling! They're rumbling, but it's not win. moving! It looks like a win, George! It's best three out of five. The fishing game, with only one bait hook and a narrow two-dimensional path down this ocean, is not particularly complex either. You wind the reel clockwise to go down, counterclockwise to go up, and the timing and speed of that motion are basically your only two tools for catching these fish. The motorcycle game is a lot more robust. It even has features for building your own tracks, even up to scanning in real-life objects with the IR camera, but it'll always be housed in the same old stadium housing the same old racers. This leads us up to the piano. The lengthiest and most complicated build is also the one without a traditional video game attached to it. Opting for two toy piano modes of varying complexity that actually drives its honest artist hardest to emulate all the keys and effects that a real piano could. Using a lever to switch octaves for a total of 65 notes, despite the piano's actual 13 keys. <laughs> it's so elegant. Players can record and save compositions and even adjust the speed of their playback by waving a toy con baton, or get goofy with a number of IR sticker pattern knobs that change the sounds. Get ready. And people have managed to pull off real music with this thing, so long as it's under one minute and everything happens to be working properly. If there's two things justifying the Labo Variety Kit's high price tag, it's the piano and garage mode, which uses a visual programming style flowchart with functions pulled from the previously mentioned toys and games. The idea here is to make your own cardboard toys out of your own cardboard, so I created a spooky ghost with a fully functional spooky. And this is the mode where people go full MacGyver, starting with professional celebrity music performances and moving on to random fans who have used Garage Mode to make entirely new games. Admittedly, the toolset is limited, and these creations aren't gonna knock anyone's socks right off, but you gotta remember this is a toy for children, intended to spark an interest in engineering, programming, or design in kids, if not more broadly for just chipping away at that fear so many adults have of fixing their own cars or building their own computers. And the irony of that is that the Labo didn't originally start out with educational goals in mind. They kind of accidentally worked their way into making an educational toy in the process of noticing that cardboard was a cheap enough material to build new gimmick controllers with. But that just harkens back to previous examples of accomplished professional firms desiring to pass their skills on to kids later in life. Early in the 20th century, the importance of educational toys was largely recognized by those in the construction business, like Frank Lloyd Wright, a famous American architect who credited his early education to the Froebel Gobbin themselves. Frank Lloyd Wright would go on to design the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo with his son, who was inspired by the Japanese practice of building foundations on a series of notched logs, which allowed some tolerance in the case of earthquakes. And that intersection of Japanese and American cultures birthed more famous edutainment. Frank's son, John Lloyd Wright, wouldn't just go on to become a successful architect in his own right, but he would also invent Lincoln Logs, a toy evoking a hearty pioneering fantasy as American as apple pie, but inspired by Japanese construction. 
Meanwhile, in the UK, the Meccano series of construction toys have been cited as the favorite childhood playthings of the architects who designed these exposed factory-like buildings in London and Hong Kong. And in the case of the Nintendo Labo, I am reminded of the best-selling children's book, The Way Things Work. Except playing with the Labo is like bringing that book's illustrations to life, with hands-on demonstrations teaching kids exactly how things work, rather than them reading and imagining how things work. Which is why I think this is a fantastic learning tool and one of the best things to happen to edutainment in years, and in fact in the future. I, I can imagine classrooms adopting a model similar to this, with AI tutors on tablets walking kids through projects that teach their concepts through hands-on experience, and there's one problem with that. This stuff ain't cheap. I come for you, George. Come for that ass. I can just defend myself. Oh! The whole box is $70, and though Nintendo released the designs for free online, you're still going to need to be a lucky enough kid to have parents who can afford a $300 Nintendo Switch. And that's a familiar problem. Researchers have found that by age 3, children of parents who are professionals have vocabularies that are 50% larger than those of children from working class families, as explained by researchers who notice that higher income parents have more time to spend reading to their kids at a young age, and more money to spend buying them educational products. Which means that sparking a children's interest in a real-ass professional skill by having them play with the Nintendo Labo is an opportunity that's not going to be granted to something like 30 to 35 percent of American school children. However, don't let that guilt trip any concerned parents out of letting them try this stuff out on their own kids, because all children of all classes are more important than their adults by default. Having a versatile suite of skills to survive the changing times is so important, and education is the golden ticket to learning those skills, to break out of poverty and achieve financial security. Security. So I want to see Nintendo try and strike some deals to lower this price enough to get it into classrooms. Because if cheesy, patronizing edutainment video games are becoming a thing of the past, then hopefully slick, playful, and respectful demo kits in which kids create actual electronics in real life will be the future of edutainment. Get your ass off! Get your ass off! Get your ass off! Get off! Get off! Get off! Get off!